Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds. And I have yet another diamond in the rough for you guys to meet today. His name is Jarvion Howard. He is a running back out of Alcorn State. Uh, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. Just taking it one day at a time. No, I got you. Uh, definitely star running back out of Alcorn. Um, uh, had a good season uh, this past year. Uh, not as good as 2022, let's be real. But, I mean, uh, certainly a very good uh, athlete uh, as of late who's going to really shock some people, maybe end up getting drafted out of Alcorn. Um, I don't even know who the last guy was who got drafted out of Alcorn. Has it been a while? I mean, uh, do, you, yeah. do you recall? Yeah, it's been a little minute. I, I I can't even tell you as well. Like, when I came into Alcorn, I, I you know, I knew about Steve McNair or whatever, but um, – yeah, was not, that was 95 or whatever, but um, yeah, Everybody. I think a lot of people know who he is, but I mean, uh, maybe you're the next guy up. Maybe you're the next guy who's going to get drafted. It would definitely be something else. Uh, Javion, if you don't mind, tell us about yourself, man. Introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and get us going. Javion Howard, man, running back. Um, I played at Syracuse. He got drafted, he got um, recruited from Syracuse to Syracuse. Um, did my four years, graduated with my uh my bachelor's out of Syracuse. Needed in my last two years. Um, hit the transfer portal, went to Alcorn State, graduated my master's, and from Columbia, Mississippi, man, small town. It's it's it been an honor, man, just to you know see this road, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, uh, interestingly enough, obviously grew up in Mississippi. Uh, went to uh, East Marion High School, so I mean. Um, Mississippi, Alcorn, Mississippi. So, I mean, it's kind of not too yeah. far from home, you know. Um, obviously, you know, have that hometown feeling, uh, you know, playing for them. But like you said, uh, was at uh, Syracuse for, for a little bit uh, before you uh, transferred out there. Um, do you want to uh, kind of reminisce a little bit about the old, t the old days of you in high school at East Marion? Um, what do you remember uh, the most about those days? Um, what I remember about the most is when, um, coming up to like through seventh grade, I had transferred from Columbia, you know, Walter Payton is from that area, from Columbia and, um, coming from Columbia, going to East Marion, my head coach used to, we used to have like five kids that used to like call themselves football players. He used to give me like five minutes to like transition from the classroom to the sand hill. He said he didn't care if it was raining, sleet, snow, hail, rain, fire outside. He got five minutes and be there with a 45-pound plate. <laughs> so I didn't know. The first time I visited, I didn't know what I was getting myself into until I actually made it there. I was like, man, this is ridiculous, man. Like, I do this every day. I I hope something good come out of it. You know, it was crazy, man. I'm running up the hills, doing all that. He had me power lifting. So I started getting real serious for football. So, um. I played, I was a multi-player, uh, like, sport player, but um, but it started getting a little serious towards 10th grade. But when I was in, like, the 8th grade, I was good in junior high. Like, I was a good junior high football player. We ended up switching head coaches, and what stuck with me the most was I was watching a number. I was watching a jersey number. Oh, okay. I, coach, can I play? I, I was like, can I be a – I knew – after junior high, you could play high school. So I went to him. I said, Coach, can I play high school football? He was like, yeah, you have to play junior varsity first because you're just coming from, coming from junior high. I was like, okay, good. So I was like, can I be the water boy for high school? So I watched the number eight. I like that was, that was my favorite number, eight. And it was a receiver. And he had me playing. Um, I was a water boy, and he ended, the guy ended up quitting. So I was like, man, that's my shot. I gotta, I gotta go get it. Like that, I, I've been wanting to play high school. I want to play at number eight. I've been number eight my whole life, Pee Wee Junior High. So when that opportunity came to me, I he was like, okay, you playing this week? We have this team that we you don't play. I'm like, I'm gonna play. I just started practicing. As soon as I started practicing, I was the I was the scout running back. Man, I got out there. First carry was like 55 yards. It was an eighth grade. I was playing high school, 55 yards. But that next week, man, I get the ball, man. I got hit so hard, man. I was a ju junior high. I got hit like 
think this guy like committed to like Ole Miss or something. Man, he hit me so hard, man. My coach said, no, 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 no. No, you ain't coming off the field. <laughs> go back in. This is what you asked for. So I go back in. I'm knowing he hit me again, the same guy. So it was my turn to get the ball. I was blocking him, but it was time for me to get the ball. And I ran full speed up, made a cut, gone 75 yards to the house. I said, yeah, that, that, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. So ever since then, started getting serious, man. Started working out hard and everything. So Gotcha. Um, so uh, like you said, I mean, in high school, you transferred somewhere that uh, obviously things started getting serious, uh, started to, you know, take this. Uh, you know, really seriously, because I mean, maybe perhaps you would be playing at the professional level one day. Which, um, dude, we're we're like on uh, on the door knocking. Uh, obviously, with that opportunity here very soon. So, uh, very early on, knew that it was coming. It just kind of took a little bit. You know, you had to uh, you know maneuver a little bit, but obviously ended up in a position where you are. Which, dude, if people don't already know who you are, they're sleeping like hell. Like I don't even know what's going on with people, <laughs> man. Like. Um, probably, uh, you know, certainly one of the top FCS guys, um, and certainly should be on everyone's board, uh, as a potential, uh, draft pick this, uh, well, I guess next month where it'll, it's going to be here, uh, very soon. Um, but, um, yeah, um, did a couple other sports I have in my, I have in my notes, baseball, um, at one point or another. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, very active in high school, um, Talk a little bit about your time at Syracuse, because obviously that was the uh, first uh, place that uh, recruited you. Um, you know, a little bit of a, a different environment. You know, you go from Mississippi to New York. Um, and so uh, a little bit of a different, uh, you know, feel perhaps. But um, talk about the Syracuse and perhaps some of the people that influenced you the most during your time there. Um, That's crazy you said, like, coming from you know, Mississippi to Syracuse. Um, I really want, I wanted to get away. I wanted to go see things. Uh, you know, that was my perspective of seeing things going to a different state. I, I don't, I don't, I haven't left the state until that. Like I was, that was my only time. So I'm like, I got to go see something, see a different environment. And I was, I had to, I was open-minded to, um, to a different, you know, perspective. Um, but, when I came out of high school, I had different offers, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, you know, but my people kept, my mom was, and my people kept asking me, why Syracuse? I was like, it just feel most comfortable. You know, the coaching staff and everything was, uh, they were still there the amount of years. They had, they was pretty fresh into the system. So I was like, I got to get around the coaching staff that was pretty stable with this time, you know, um, you know, me playing football. But when I got there, it was like, you know, it when I went on my official, it was different. You know, obviously, you know, it was snowing around the time, and I'm like, you know, uh, we don't get that much. But it was a guy, Chris Elmore. He was my tight end. Uh, he played a lot, everywhere, fullback. They mixed him up in the running back room. He played tight end. He even went to guard one year, and he was just everywhere. He influenced me. He was like, look, if this is what you really want to do, um. Don't just look at it from the football side of things. You know, football don't last long. You know, get you a good education, man. It's an opportunity for you to, you know, make it happen. And he just kept it honest. Like, man, we need a running back that's going to come in and put it, if, you know, eat regardless of where you stand with the football side. We know for sure you're going to push everybody, you know, in a, on the team to be better because of the work ethic you have. Like, cool, you know. I went at it for what it was. I only took one official, and that was it. Well, I took two, and that was to South Alabama. But um, I ended up going to, you know, committing to Syracuse. Um, when I got there, they had – I was a potential, like, just – I was third down running back. That's what I was. We had Dante Strickland and Mo Neal. Um, Dante was the first string my freshman year. Um, Mo Neal was the backup. And I was a third down running back. But the first two games, I didn't touch the ball. And they had Gabe O'Neill, like, 10 carries at the goal line. I was like, shit. You know, I went to coach. I'm like, look, we can't keep going down there at the goal line and not finishing. And I knew I was a little heavier, and that's what I was better at. I was better at, like, the short yardage. And he was like, is that right, Mississippi? I was like, yeah. So went to him one Sunday, like, before scout report meetings and all of that. He said, go see Coach Calf, that which is Coach Kavanaugh. Um, the old line coach about that. He said, 
Yeah, Jarv, I, I totally agree with you. So that Sunday, I was basically not even in the game plan, right? That Monday, I had a board full of plays that I had a that I had to remember. Um, I had to not remember. I had to learn before Friday because I was playing on Saturday. So I had to get all this content down, and it was it was crazy, man. It was, it was going from not even low key a freshman, not even having to worry. You know how freshmen don't have to really worry about too much to switching the game plan up on me and now I got a whole buttload of information I got to obtain. But when that happened, our first year, um, I was third down back, second year, third down back, helping the team, you know, just doing my role. My coming to third, my third year still was the third down back. Um, and it was like, yeah, I gotta make a move on it. Um, if I want to go to the NFL. So that's what I did. I'm like, I gotta make a move on it. If I don't make a move on it, it's gonna be it's going to be tragic, right? Um, so I'm telling them, like, Coach, I appreciate you for, you know, bringing me in. I ended up graduating my um, degree, and he it was no hard feelings or anything. You know, good coaches, good coaching staff, they take care of you in New York, man. They they do it right at Syracuse. They're going to take care of you. Um, that's what I was looking for anyway, and that's what it was. Um, it wasn't – it wasn't no bad energy or anything just because it wasn't going the way that I wanted it on my end. Doesn't mean that it wasn't a good place for me. You know, um, the system just didn't work out for me. That's, I just had to make a move on it. Yeah. I mean, um, give uh, Syracuse there uh just do. I mean, they're a great program. Um, mm -hmm. a very, uh, you know, very good tradition uh, amongst the running back position. Um, but um, obviously weren't getting the opportunities that perhaps you were due. Um, and then, of course, um, Alcorn really did give you those opportunities, man. I mean, you end up transferring down there and um, really setting yourself apart. I mean, you you get to this one point where you're maybe perhaps this unknown running back to really just, you know, making a splash uh, onto the scene as one of these guys who uh, could even be drafted this year, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's very... Uh, very possible that we can is see an Alcorn State running back, uh, you know, here very soon. So I do want to kind of let you in on um, some of the good things that our own scout had to say about you. Um, and so uh, just hear me out on some of these uh, comments, and I kind of want to get your opinion on them. Um, powerful, relentless runner, rarely goes down on first contact, right? And always fighting for extra yards, a, a bruiser, uh, definitely very, uh, you know, consistent in the in short yardage. How do you take those comments? And is there more about you that perhaps not a lot of people know? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that's what you see, because that's what I'm given. Um, and that's was all I was able to, you know, give for the first couple of years. The years of Sir Alcorn was a different. Um, when you get me in a system where we're sharing the ball equally, other things come out. That's when, like, you throw the ball to me, I make you miss and go. I'm sliding out. Um, but I like the comments. I, you know, I just leave the comments where it's at. You know, uh. I try to work hard. I do. I work on the things that I know I need to work on behind closed doors, not just let comments be coming, um, regardless if they're good or bad, you know. Um, but it's uh, it's it that that's what people see. But I most definitely, if you get if I'm one two steps in front of you, you might as well just stop running because I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember you know myself watching one of your games against one of your opponents in 2022 and. Bro, it was like you were a man amongst boys, just like bulldozing over these people that couldn't tackle you to save their life. Um, I yeah. think you ended up doing something like 200 yards or something in that game. It was just one one of those games where like you just couldn't do anything wrong. Um, and so um, when you kind of look back at um, even e either that year or this past season, um, what do you what would you say is like maybe like one of your best games or uh, biggest highlight of you uh, as a collegiate player? Oh, uh, talking about like this season? Just kind of overall. Um, I take, I'm going to say I take being played with as a team very disrespectful. That game that came out, 
I think we gave the game before them a kind of a close game. So that game came out and they they um the first thing they did was onside kick. No, I don't that don't sit well with me. So when they had when we finally got the ball, I went to my coach. I said, I don't care who it's going to, but it better be my better be me. It it wasn't being cocky or anything, but I, I needed to let them know that we here. You ain't gonna play with us with an onside kick, not at the beginning of a game. That's not gonna happen. Like, who you playing, a peewee team? Like, that's just how I went about it. You know, like, that's not going to happen. Like, you're you going to onside kick? Let's be honest. You That's like a, something you do in Madden. When you playing with a – playing against, like, a toddler or something. Like, okay, I know I'm going to come – we know we're going to win, so I'm going to onside kick. So, I call. I actually called what I wanted to run based on what I was given at, um, the whole time. What they was given on film, Um, my coach said, we're going to run a counter. And I said, that's perfect because they trying to beat me to a point because they can't actually catch me to the, they're going to try to overplay the point, uh, play me to the spot. Um, and I can cut back and, you know, do whatever I need to do. Um, but man, I just don't, that's one thing I, I don't, I don't take playing with my team disrespectful. I come out with, <laughs> some, so uh, yeah, I come out very relentless. So, um, I mean, you talk about that one counter play. I mean, um, is there maybe perhaps a, a specific play that you uh, really enjoy, you know, executing for your team or, or or what? Um, based on what we was given, um, teams started picking up. Um, they started stacking the box, but more of a power. Um, we had better, we had good tackles that year, so that power was working, and we had well, our tight ends this year was really good. Um, but more had like good tackles and everybody complimented each other on the O line for sure last year. Um, and we just did what we needed to do, man. It was um I know we called kind of I know I'm automatic six yards. Uh regardless. I mean, if they don't hit me by the time we get to six, it's probably gonna turn into a 20, 20 yard game. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh like I said, I mean, uh, typically don't go go down on, on first hit, able to uh, you know, make guys miss and um shrug these little dudes off that try and tackle you so yeah um Jarvan, what's your current height and weight these days i mean i know you had a pro day um literally yesterday um but yeah. uh, what, what's your current height and weight for for people uh, they had me five five nine five nine i was five nine two nineteen five nine two nineteen um, I think it's five nine and some change. I I know it's like five nine and yeah, like five, fraction. Three, whatever four is. five nine, like I basically like rounded like five ten. Yeah, I'm well, like five nine, like three four, or some crazy stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but and already, man, you have uh, really done well for yourself. Uh, you know, during the this uh, pre draft, uh, you know, you know time right now, um, you um got an opportunity at the Legacy Bowl. Um, and then um, also did in the HBCU Combine, where you were undoubtedly one of the best players there. Um, let's just be real. I mean, uh, four five two forty is uh, pretty respectable. Um, decent broad jump, ten six is what I was able to uh, uh, find. Um, just kind of overall, um, you know, really separated yourself from people and. Um, just recently, I know you, uh, you know, increased one of your, uh, I guess, things, your your bench at your pro day yesterday. We were talking before we, uh, you know, got started. So uh, talk about this whole process, these events, uh, pro day and all that, and, and how you're doing these days. Um, When I had got the uh, invite to the HBCU uh, Legacy Bowl, that was first. Then the HBCU Legacy, like the HBCU Combine, the NFL Combine came second. So my mindset was everybody wanted to see how fast I can run. And I said, you you just want me to line up on the line and run as fast as I can, right? Okay, that's a 40, right, basically. So I'm telling them, okay, I'm going to do that. So my mindset was go out, have a good NFL combine, basically, enough for where I can focus on other things when it's time for my pro day. So I was working hard once I figured out, like, okay, they gave me, they gave me the combine, cause you know, um, pro days are like a month after like a, the original combine and stuff like that. Like you get a whole, basically oh, yeah. a whole, yeah. So the combine was on February nineteenth. 
that's a long time. So my trainer was asking me, you going to participate in it? I said, yeah, that's going to be the best. That's going to be the best thing for me because I know where I was staying going into my pro day and what I would what I need to really work on. So I just took everything in, man, the massages. They was giving, man, I was just taking it all in, the body fat percentages, everything. Like, everything just put me in the mode of, you know, just doing well that whole weekend. Um, Did well at the um combine, um, 30, 36.5 vert, a 10.8 broad. Um, and the 40, they had me unofficial. Oh, a fit, a high with it, unofficial 446. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, like – it's I'm not you know that that's those are areas that I don't need to work on at you know um and everything else just I I was able to focus on bench like that's what I could focus on um and field drills I did well field drills at uh the HBCU combine and I did well field drills in in Starkville but I was mainly centering myself around bench and that's what I've been working on every Sunday. I was going to the gym testing and see if I could PR. I was working hard throughout the week and I I wouldn't do anything on Saturdays. I'd rest up on a Saturday, eat good the night before, and go out and test my bench on that Sunday. And I kept tapping out like when I got back from the combine, I was tapping out at like 23. I'm like, man, I gotta get that up. So I'm looking at the numbers at the NFL combine. I'm like, man, I gotta get it up. I'm seeing 27, 25. I'm like, no, that's not gonna happen. So I ended up I was just, I started switching up my workouts, getting online, looking up things. What what could I do to help my bench? And, you know, just taking it, you know, just taking it for what it was. Tapped out at 27, two weeks in a row. Frustrated. Man, I need the 30, man. I'm trying to get 30. <laughs> so I went up there to Starkville. I'm like, man, if I give me a great night's sleep, I eat this before. You know, just, man, I got super superstitious. I got superstitious, <laughs> you know, for the uh for the bench. Went out, hit 28 felt good i wanted to hit one number more than blake corn uh so you know he had the most at the uh combined so i I just wanted to hit one more you know he was a he was a um he was an inspiration for me just going out doing what i needed to do you know because he had great numbers at the combine so i was like man i gotta chase specific numbers you know um so that's just to let him know like yeah you know i played at all corn i also played at syracuse so i know both sides of the world and i know both sides of the game um and that was just, man, it, it was a it was an honor, man. Went to the HBC Legacy Bowl. It's I I participated one day at practice. Um, I didn't play in the game. Um, I let them know that I wasn't uh gonna participate in the uh practices or game. Um, it's just a different the game was a little close to my pro day, and I feel like I needed a uh, you know, I still had more things I needed to prove in the areas on my pro day. So I just cautionary. I didn't I didn't participate. Um, I had let them know. Went out one day, practice. It's a difference between practice, you know, preparing for a pro day and preparing for a game. That later oh, later right. after a season. So I just let them know, like, thank you for it. Um, I went to them early just because I thought that another running back had an opportunity to come in. You know, if he needed an opportunity to use the game to to increase his stock. At the HBCU, I gave him enough time to do it. I wasn't going to be that guy to practice all the way to Friday and let him know I wasn't playing in the game on Saturday. You know, I, I don't work that way. You know, I was going to let him know that, man, uh, I'm not going to participate. Can you bring someone else in that pops, possibly need the game or, you know, just bring someone else in, you know? Um, and that's what I did. And But it was the good deal, man, uh, the career fairs. Everything that tied around with it was a good deal for the, uh for guys, and I feel like the HBCU Legacy Bowl is a good thing for guys and to go out and uh get themselves seen and and but you know I just I just had other plans. Yeah, I mean the people that run the HBCU Re- Legacy Bowl um do a great job of putting together a, a nice event uh, for you guys to just kind of understand what it means to be a professional um and just kind of you know know what. Uh, know what NFL ball looks like, you know, uh, with some great coaches and, um, and everything. So uh, definitely great to have an opportunity to do that. Um, again, a lot of things working well for you lately, um, you know, with, with all of that. Um, 
But I uh, do want to uh, start wrapping up our time here because uh, we've been at it for uh, quite some time right now. Um, obviously, uh, there are some doubters, even still, even after uh, your, uh, you know, your performance, uh, you know, at, at that at that combine at your pro day, um, people might still be wondering, is this guy worth a draft pick? I mean, what can we do with this guy at the next level? What do you got to say to all them doubters, man? I mean, go ahead and close us with your final thoughts as to, you know, why you should be drafted, why why, why we should get an Alcorn State guy uh, drafted this season. So uh, close us with your final thoughts. Uh, uh, coming, you know, taking the transition from my, my last uh, school to here, to Alcorn, to the, where I'm at now, I'm not really trying to prove the doubters wrong. I'm trying to prove the ones who, are, who believe me right. Yeah, like, you know, it's a short percentage of the guys. You know, I'd be, I will be proving doubters wrong all my life. You know, it's going to be that, you know. Just keeping the ones around me that believe in me. You know, you give me a shot, I know for sure that I'm going to be in your building for a little minute. Um, and regardless of what I'm doing, if you want me to carry the water, just let me carry a little Gatorade every now and then. Um, <laughs> but that just weren't bad with it. You know, I told them if, if the offensive line, if everybody on the same page, when I get my opportunity in, at any camp or any – place when it's time for me to um get drafted get signed you know I should get drafted that's what I'm putting it at you know I'm gonna say that you know that's that I'm gonna speak highly but um regardless if, you, if they if everybody on the same page one accord when it's time for me to do my thing just believe me I'm gonna make a I'm gonna, I'm gonna cause some controversy in your in your uh in your in your um room Death chart <laughs> right I'm, I'm gonna cause some controversy in in a good way you know, you know, you know, I'm not that guy to be, oh, I should be doing, you know, that, that. you know, I'm going to play why, you know, to help my team win, regardless of where it's at. Um, if you want me to go to defense and I'm a running back, I do. It just, that's just where I'm at. You know, anything you need me to do to help you win, and you know, it's going to happen. Um, so that's just where I'm at with it. I'm not trying to prove any doubters wrong uh, because that's, that's, that's actually a hard thing that, that put more weight on your shoulders when you just prove the people right to actually believe you'll get a lot farther. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're looking at a guy who, like, you know, like we've already talked about, um, you know, went ahead and uh, bet on himself, took an opportunity to uh, go to all corn and uh, really put yourself on the map uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, these top running backs uh, for this draft class. And um, like I had said before, I mean, again, um, a guy who is a relentless runner, um, who's not going to go down when he's first touched, uh, you know, very, uh, very determined uh, to get from point A to point B. Um, and so uh, certainly somebody you can count on uh, in short yardage and obviously a guy who can, you know, scamper down the field on like a 50 yard run. If you need him to do that too, he can do that too. So uh, Jarvion, want to wish you uh, all the best uh, with your draft journey. And uh, we'll see what team uh, has fallen in love with you very soon as you get your opportunity, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. Once again, Jarvion Howard, running back, Alcorn State. Uh, yes. Check out his film. It's, uh, it, it's good. Yes, sir.